Come on, come on, go, go, come on, come on, go, go. Hi, and welcome to episode 18 of West End Talks. Today, we are delighted to have a Jeremy from Be More Chill. He was also Alan in Blinded by the Light, Scott in Nativity 2, and D- Django in Dixie 4 on CBBC. So please, big hand. I'm also in the bathroom, so that might give you a clue. Uh, it's Scott Fallen. Hi. Hi. Hi, Scott. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for joining us. Um, it's, it's a delight to have you. Obviously, you were in Be More Chill before, before lockdown happened. Yeah. You played but... Jeremy. Yeah. Um, excuse the pun at the start of the bathroom. I just I couldn't resist it. <laughs> I'm sure you probably hear that a lot. No, it's brilliant. Um, the picture was better than actually being in the bathroom. I was tempted, but I thought, no, that was yeah. maybe too far. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Reveal too much of your home, your private. Yes. Life. Yeah. Yeah, too much, definitely. But but thank you for joining us. So we'll get right into it. Yeah. Our first question today, we we asked two questions of, of everybody. And the first one is what did what got you into performing? Um it was probably my mum and dad. So when I was about six, so my dad is a musical theatre composer. Uh so he writes musicals and my uh or at least the songs for them. And my mum is a like she does so many things, but but uh, she like does opera, musical theatre, and maths. Um, but she a combination. It was great. When I was about six, she was doing a lot of like amateur dramatics, and she brought me along to one of the rehearsals, and it was Fiddler on the Roof. And apparently, I like wanted to be in it, and so they they had me just walk across the back, and apparently I'd like create a whole backstory for myself. <laughs> like, relationships I'd like chosen family members I was like pick two that I thought are oh, they my parents and so yeah no so then they they were like well we better send them to a drama school um and then I went to Bowdoin's which uh is in my local area mm-hmm. and I was there for about 10 years and they they acted as my agent uh for four years for Nativity 2 which was my first job um and then I got myself an agent at 16 um and and now I'm 20 so it's been a it's been a wild like ten years of brilliant, yeah. That's, yeah and now just off, off we'll we'll see West End. Not qu- not quite, technically not, but we'll see West End for this show. We'll call it the West End production. Yeah, it was a West End production. It was <laughs> um so you've certainly had a, a, a manic ten years. Um the, the the second question was first show, but I take it the, your first show kind of was, was obviously fiddler, but then you mentioned but technically what was your first role in theatre? So my, uh, my first professional job was Nativity 2, which was a film. Mm-hmm. But then that, um, I can't remember if, yeah, I, th- I think it was either it was the same casting director or like the casting directors who cast children talk to each other. Um, yeah. And that got me from doing Nativity 2, I can't remember how, but somehow that got me an audition for uh, Damned by Despair at the National Theatre. So I was, right. I was 13 and I was in a play at the Olivier Theatre. And at the time I was like, oh yeah, it's just a show, isn't it? But looking back, that's like what I aim for now. I'm like, that would be the pinnacle of my career. So I'm like on my way down. I see it as like, I, I peaked at 13 and now I'm just like, yeah. Not at all, not at all. A lot of actors nowadays, you look at some of the actors nowadays, uh, like Bonnie Langford, for example, she started as a kid. So uh, you, you can start, that's just the name, one catching. I drop low and now hopefully I'm like going back up. Stop. It's a bit of a roller coaster, but we're, all, we're getting through it. I don't know if you'd call like, you had nativity, then you had the national, then you've had, yeah. you've had a bit, then, big films, you've had Blind yeah, Light as well. In fact, I was the lead in a central sitcom at 15. That was like the next thing I did. Um, and so it was really like, I like, when I was a kid, I liked just doing different things. So I didn't see it as like, I didn't realize things were better than others. It was just like I'd done a film, a play, telly. Um, the actual, the next thing I was really excited to do was an advert, which most actors would actively avoid. But I was like, oh my God, no, I really want to do an advert. Um, so I then did Orbit Gun. Like then, and then CBBC, which I was watching at the time. So I was really excited for. So as a kid, I did loads of exciting things. And then I got to about 18 and I didn't work for a year. And I was like, oh my God. This industry is scary. And then the, the rest is history, is it? And then a certain yeah. musical from Broadway came over. 
Uh, you mentioned a couple of things. I was going to bring these out later on, but you've mentioned them, so we'll, we'll bring them out. Sorry. This was the advert. Oh my God. Yeah. This is the Orbit advert that I actually remember. I genuinely, once I watched it back, and I genuinely remember, I'm like, oh, I remember that one. Oh my God. That it was the, the girl, you were, you were getting bullied by him, weren't you? That was yeah. the whole kind of story, and then the, the girl, mm -hmm. and the girl put what pass, and you had a bit of a bit, and you had the confidence to, to go on. Yeah, yeah, it was such a weird advert. And um, my, I always talk, like, I, so I keep saying it, so I was like horrifically bullied at school. I mean, we all were, we're in musical theatre, why else would we be? Um, but I, I was really badly bullied about that advert, and about how bad my American accent was. Um, but like the, the fans of Be More Chill have been like, oh my God, no, it's great. Um, I oh, thought it was great, yeah. But I always like, I always gave the excuse that, so I had braces for three years because of this advert. So I um, had braces and then they wanted me to take them off. And I was like, but I've only got a month left. And, and they were like, well, we have to, you have to take them off or you don't get the job. So I took them off and my dentist, my orthodontist was like, no, you'll be fine. Honestly, you've only got a month left. And in the time I was in Prague to shoot this advert, my teeth went on that. And I had to put them on for another year. Um, but basically, my, I blame my American accent being really bad from them. They took braces out, literally the day before, flew me to Prague, stuck gum in my mouth, and, and gave me lines, like, on the day. So I was like, I said, I love what you're doing with your hair. Like, not knowing how to move my mouth. Like, it wasn't fair. <laughs> so many excuses about that ad. I've had years of people teasing me about my American accent. You no, know, as I said, generally do it. And then you mentioned also a TV show. I'm assuming it was Brotherhood. Brotherhood, yeah, yeah. This oh one my here. God. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Really, I've got the pictures. Oh look yeah. At, look at this cutie. I'd say, if, except for Be More Chill, which I still think is the the coolest job the job I've done. This was the most fun I've ever had in a job. Because these two here, so that's Ben Ashenden on, uh, with the glasses, Johnny yeah. Flynn on the left. Um, they are two of the funniest men in our industry. And they, they, they just improvised. They had scripts, but they threw them out on the second day of filming. Because that's what you do as an actor, yeah? So much. They, John, in fact, Johnny Flynn, who's a massive actor now, um, does loads of stuff on Netflix and he's also a musician. He, um, he did an interview about what it was like to work with a kid like talking about me and he basically just said you do the funniest thing you think you've ever done and your director's got his head in his hands because scott has started laughing and they have to ruin they have to throw the take out and I, so i basically ruined so much of that shot like so much of that um sure. series because i'd ruined shots it was so bad but i learned a lot which is really important so yeah i say you learn you learn from everything whether it was it was a good experience or a bad experience you still learn yeah. Anyway, moving on. Sorry. We, no, don't be sorry. It's fine. Everything's great. Um, so West End Talks holds no responsibility mm -hmm. um, okay. for the rest of the questions up until a certain point. They are all from either your fans or Be More Chill fans. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the, the first one we're going to start with is from Gracie. Hi, and Gracie. she asks, oh, sorry, she asks, what's the weirdest thing to happen in the audience while performing during Be More Chill? That's a really good question. Um, so we had a lot of uh, like amazing audience members. The, the audiences were always amazing because most of them have been following the show for years and know and have watched every online thing there is. So they know all the dances, they know all of the songs. So, and the front row was called the Squip, the Squip Squad, the Squip, the Squip Zone. Sorry, it's Squip, been- yeah so they bought tickets specially to be on the front row they get a little badge and a, t and a certificate of that the badge is, has been given to them and them alone for sitting in that row um, but it also meant that those were the biggest fans in the theatre because they'd spent the money they, they love the show so much they want the memorabilia they want to be there they want to be part of it so they knew all the dances so there was always and this was never a bad thing this would always be like a really like it would like spur you on because you know you're there for a reason like you know you're there yeah. to um and uh they, they would literally be like like and sometimes it's great and sometimes they know it better than you 
And, and that's bad. And that's bad because when you make a mistake, like for our show, I could make a mistake as Jeremy and kind of get away with it because I just start doing this and like just kind of go, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm nerdy. But uh, when the audience members know the dance and know what you're supposed to be doing, you shut down because you go, oh my God, if I make a mistake, like I'm literally like this. I have no acting when I'm dancing. I was like, <laughs> yeah, so that was horrendous. I also realized I, I've forgotten all the dances because I couldn't give you a single one that was actually in the show. Um, yeah, I've got nothing. It's been- You'll, really um, you'll, you'll pick it back up like, yeah. it's, like it's nothing. God, I hope so. Um, so. So moving on, Maddie asks- Yeah, Maddie, hi Maddie. She asks, have you ever messed up a line or choreography? If so, how did you cover it up? And if not, what would you do in that situation? So the obvious answer is yes. And I did it basically every night. I did know all of my lines. I did know all of the routines, but I never left the stage and be more chill. So especially in the first act, I was on the stage for 45 minutes all through. I had about 30 seconds off stage in the entire act. I started the act and I ended the act singing alone. Um, so there was no time for like that cheeky, I forgot what goes on next scene, let me have a look at the script. You just have to, if you, I had no time to even think further ahead than what I was doing. So I did just forget things and, and I had amazing cast members who would help me, um, but it didn't happen often, like big ones, but little ones and, and funny little like movements would go wrong. Um, I like not in my light, that happened a lot. Like that was my note I got every day. It was Scott, you've moved out of your light again. Can you just, you just have to just stand in one spot and not move. Um, but the main one was I forgot one key thing at the beginning of the show. Now I have a lot of people looking at me and making sure that I'm supposed to be, making sure I'm like got all my things. Um, but, but that's not their job. They were doing that as a nicety. So when they didn't do it, it's not their fault. Like the, the um, wardrobe department, they don't, it's not their job to check I've got my costume on. They just give it to me. But I would have really lovely wardrobe people going like, you got your glasses, you got this, you got... and I'd kind of go, yeah, got them, got them. And eventually they'd stop doing it. The first night I wasn't asked if I didn't have my glasses. I went on yeah. the... and, um, and And that, that is a real issue when there is a scene about how my eyesight is fixed. <laughs> and you have no glasses on. And, and I don't need the stage, like at all. So I had to go to the side of the stage while my mic's on, because my mic doesn't get turned off because I don't stop singing. So I had to, go, I had to go like this, get my glasses and walk back on. And it was so bad that and Eloise, who was our dance captain, but she played Brooke, she literally came on and did this during a dance. And I had to put them on like nothing was wrong and like it had never happened. And it was so horrendous. But I thank my lucky stars that Eloise was there to save me. And, I just to, and, and uh, that I didn't cover it up. I really did not. Uh, it was horrendous. I, it, nothing in it like that had ever happened to me before. But as it was happening, as the, a scene was occurring where James's character, Rich, was bullying me, and uh, asked me how my day was. And looking back, all I had to say was that, like, a, a stupid line about forgetting my glasses, like, as Jeremy. And the audience would have just been on side, and it, it would have been funny, and they would have got it, and then moved on. But I didn't. And I froze, and I was so annoyed at myself. Because I, I know that would forever be the day that Scott forgot his glasses. But if I'd fixed it, it would be the day that Scott forgot his glasses and got away with it. Do you know what I mean? I mean yes. Still live it to this day. I didn't do it. But there you go. Hindsight's a great thing. Yeah, 2020. Rubbish. It's basically rubbish. I, I, yeah, 2020. <clears throat> um, so some, some people haven't left their names. So snake.legs on their Instagram. I doubt that's their actual name, but that's their Instagram name. Oh, has asked, what is your favourite Be More Chill character other than Jeremy? Christine. Just because she has, she sings my favorite song and Miracle played her so cute. Like it, you, you just wanted to like, you just wanted her to win. You forgot about Jeremy. You were like, I don't care about you. I just want you to get what you want. 
and so I, I would want to play if I could play anyone else. And I was also and 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 there didn't and it was like gender bent roles, whatever that thing's called. I would play Christine. Okay, oh, good. Good, good. You yeah, answered two questions, and that's quite good. Um, so Stephen um, mm -hmm. and Letitia both asked the same question. Ooh. They asked, "What's your favourite song to sing in the show?" Lose a geek, what? Mm. Oh, you answered that confidently, then changed your mind there. I did. So there's there's obviously two. My favourite song to sing in the show was Lose a Geek or Whatever because everything led up to it. So the entirety of being on stage for 45 minutes in Act 1 led up to Lose a Geek or Whatever. There was an arc and I, I built to it so that I could feel it and I didn't have to act. I could just be in the moment because I'd already done all the work. Um, and so it was a really free moment to be an actor on stage because I, I didn't feel like I was Scott acting. I didn't feel like I had to do anything because I already done the work during the act to make myself feel the right things so I could just sing the song, feel the emotions and go off stage. But looking back, the best moment for me each night was singing, starting um, uh, the very final number, which I never, I never remember the name of until I, I sing it. Um, uh, the, the very last number, Voices in My Head, because it just had, like it, it was that moment of we've got to the end of this and like this is this is the moment where everyone goes like not even the cap just everyone feels that feeling we want them to feel because yeah. everything's resolved it's the resolution moment um and that was the nicest the nicest feeling so i that's like a dub i can't really decide because retrospectively it's it's um voices in my head but yeah. i remember in the moment how good lose a geek whatever was um, so yeah, I think Loser Geek Whatever is probably my favourite song. Mm -hmm. Like, Perfect. you've obviously got Mike in the Bathroom, which is a classic. You don't, you don't sing that one, obviously, but um, and that is a classic. That's the one everybody knows. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's the most well-known song, but I think Loser Geek Whatever certainly, what was it? certainly my favourite. Um, and that's not, not just because you're here, don't worry. I'd have said that to any of the cast. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> um, so, Danny and Olive, they asked the same, same question as well. They asked, what sort of advice do you have for someone wanting to go into musical theatre? Um, uh, I always say there's a, the, best, the best advice I was given and the thing that I found has worked best for me uh, is just, uh, is auditions are really important. So it's not about like turning up to as many as you can uh, it's not it's not about like being the best it's just about trying to make yourself castable so that doesn't mean you have to be better than everyone else it just means you have to be um make someone think they want to work with you so that's things like being kind which i think is the most important thing in this industry um you you can be really really talented but if someone doesn't want to work with you they will choose not to and if that person is the director you won't get the job so don't don't make people not want to work with you because eventually the actor that you worked with it when you were 19 and you made hate you is going to grow up and be a director and not give you the job that you really wanted because they hate you so don't don't make anyone hate you just be kind it's super easy um, make loads of cups of tea that's the trick i found just make people tea offer people tea people love tea and um, the other thing is um for auditions be confident um, because the key thing I found in musical theatre ones, at least, is it's so hard to, as a casting director, because um, I'm really good friends with a lot of casting directors now, um, and they, I, I definitely know the hardest thing is to just pick people, because there are so many people in musical theatre, and there are so many talented people in musical theatre. Um, you have to just start, you have to be, to get yourself out of that, like, just like line, um, be really confident. Uh, and that thing about being castable. Uh, but when, when I go into an audition, I, I know that that person on the other side of the table needs to find somebody to fit this role. It, that's their job. That's their, that's what they've been paid for. And if they don't do it, they don't get paid. So, well, I don't know how that works, but if they don't do it, they failed their job at least. Right. Yes. So, um, go in there and do the best you can. And if you fail, if, like I always tell the story of my Dear Evan Hansen audition. This is where I really learned this. 
is I went in there at nine o'clock in the morning and sung Disappear. And it was the most horrendous piece of singing you've ever heard in your life. Like it was like cracking notes, like wobbling on notes that really weren't very high. Um, and I finished the song and I didn't say anything. And I kind of apologized and walked out. Um, and what I should have done and what I do now is I stop halfway through songs that are going badly. And I say, do you know what? I'm going to stop myself there. Can I drink some water and sing you a different song? Cause this isn't working. Um, because they will say if uh, most of them I found will just say, yeah, go on. That's absolutely fine. Cause they want you to be the one if, cause if you're the one, then they've done their job and they can just sit yeah. back for the couple of hours they they're being paid for. So like to make yourself the most comfortable in that room, make yourself comfortable, be kind to everyone, not just people who you think it will be good if you're kind to these people in the future, just be kind to everyone. It's super easy. Um, but also be so comfortable in those rooms because they want to cast you. That's the key yeah. thing. They want you to be the best. They want you to be the Jeremy and be more chill because if you are, then they found it. And that was proved to me by be more chill because they'd spent, well, at least they said to me they'd seen a hundred boys before they saw me. Um, and they had to end, they had to go back to America without a Jeremy. Uh, and that panicked them. And, uh, and they were so thankful to find, this is a really lovely thing for them to say to me, but they said they were really thankful to find me, which proved that thing of, they just want to, they just, they, it's their job to find that's that. you. So that's my advice. I don't, I don't. Really good advice. Yeah. A sheet and stuff. <laughs> like, that's really long, but make yourself no, be kind and be confident. That's three great points there. Fantastic. Danny then goes on to ask, she asked another small question. Is there any skills that you wouldn't have thought you needed, but would actually ended up being useful? Oh, um, well, actually, outside of musical theatre, in life generally, and in jobs, maths, because taxes are the worst. I don't, I don't like, it, they, I don't get them. I just don't, I don't, like, I just don't care though. I just don't get them. My mu so my mum is a bookkeeper because she did maths at university. So she, I literally pay her money to do my tax returns because Jesus Christ, is that confusing. And I'm so glad I get maths on even a small level because if I didn't, I would, I would be like lost to the world. So if you're in school and people are being like, I'm never going to use this in life, trust me, you will. <laughs> well, you don't uh, use it at some point. Um, but in terms of musical theatre, I don't know. Uh, there's definitely things like I wish I'd learned. Like I still haven't learned how to drive, and I've definitely been on a job where um, at least someone else in the car with me, has, like or like on the set, I mean, has been asked like, "Do you drive?" And then they've been like, "Oh, okay, no worries." And then they go to someone else, and that other person on the set gets to be in a shot that they wouldn't have been in because they could drive. Like, that's definitely a thing I wish I'd learned to do. Um, I really, do, I, don't, I don't think I've yet, I'm only 20, so I really haven't been yeah. on all of those. So I don't think I've yet found something that I've been like, I didn't think I would need that. Um, my glasses have proved to be really useful. Especially when you be more chill. <laughs> yeah, so I, I have been cast to so many- When you bring them on stage anyway. Well, yeah, when I wear them. <laughs> um, but I've been cast to so many geeks and nerds. So I, my agent, when I was 16, said to me, um, and, and she was totally right at the time, because if you watched all the Netflix shows, they were all just really muscular guys um, who were being cast as the male leads. But like two years later, that flipped on its head and all of the male leads that were being cast were skinny, nerdy, kind of like like I don't know, geeky like like, like Scott Follins. Yeah, just Scott Follins. Little Scott Follins, fifteen year old Scott Follins. Um and I was so glad that I didn't go on like a year long diet plan to like bulk up because I would never have got um a lot of the jobs. So don't like accept the body type you are this is body positivity with Scott Follin, but like um, <laughs> we can like, do whatever you want. Don't like spend a year trying to change your body or like just love what you are because I did and I was like oh, I quite like being skinny and then a year later I was offered the 
CBBC Dixie program. And then it was like, went from geek to geek to geek. In fact, one of them was a goth and it still helped that I was skinny because they wanted me to have like stick thin legs, which I'm wearing the trousers I was cast in. Like, so you have stick thin legs. <laughs> thin legs. So like, it's funny how much that's benefited my career being skinny and nerdy. And like, that's what I was bullied for in school. So I, w I won't stick my middle fingers up, but do you know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very true. Yes. That's yeah. I'd like that. Well, I like that kind of story when you get to do that to the bullies. Hell yeah. Uh, Sarah, Sarah what, can, can asks, if Be More Chill was to open back up, right. would you go back as Jeremy? Like, would you go back? Not necessarily what the cast and director of him wants. Without question. Like, yeah. it, I mean, like, I, in fact, I said to, because when, when we closed, uh, like, the, the, the final show, we weren't even allowed to say um, final show. We, we did know um, uh, when on that. So there was a because we we weren't in on a Monday. No, that was our day off, and that's when the West End closed. And we were told, obviously, on that Monday, and then people found out on the Wednesday. And we had a couple of days where I was like, "Oh my god, I can't." Oh no, I think people were told on that Monday. Um, but basically, we had a few days where everyone was a bit unsure about being more chill. And I obviously we'd been told, "Don't come into work," because <laughs> we weren't going to go in for nothing, but it was a bit of a horrible um, time. But even then they were like, if we come back, we want you. Like, and that was a really nice thing. Um, we obviously know our show, our poor show would only go till June uh, yeah. and, and things are closed until August. So we aren't oh, in our Today company. actually, was it not? Is it today? Is today our, I no, June, I think June 16th. Oh, was it 16th? Was it not Saturday? It was closing. No, sorry, apologies. I've no idea. <laughs> I thought it was a Saturday, but it could be wrong. You know better than me. You're the cast. There was, in fact, there was at one point we were selling tickets till August. Um, yeah, well, because it, it was closing in June, but I, yeah. I noticed that you were selling tickets to August, and I'm like, all right, okay. So, but that was when we it was so up in the air. This, I mean, what I'm going to say is we, not even I know, we know as much as people know about theatre generally. Yeah, so, because we don't know about theatre. That's the thing. We did. We, I said that because we got a lot of questions. Uh, I'll say that just now. We got a lot of questions from people asking, "Is it coming back? Is it not?" Now I kept saying, "I'm sorry, well, I'm not asking that because no. Scott doesn't know. Like no. nobody knows what's happening with theatre at the moment. So, yeah, how can Scott answer if you know Chelsea's coming back? I don't know if theatres are opening. Yeah, I mean? I'd love to say I even knew, but it's up in the air. The whole our whole industry is up in the air. Right? Yeah, completely. That's an annoying thing. So go um, back. If they, that's why we're here to try and keep his keep yeah. theatre going, keep the light on slightly. Yeah. Um, if they asked me, I'd be there. That's you'd, be, like, you'd have been there five hours before they asked you. <laughs> if they're watching, the answer is yes, guys. <laughs> here we go. So there, he, he wants to come back. Okay. Uh, the fans want him back. So, um, <laughs> Lucy, she goes on and asks, "In what ways are you similar to Jeremy?" And in what ways are you different? I would find it easier to say similar than different. Um, I've never taken a squip. Uh, I've, but, but the point of the story isn't that. It's about, it's about like, there isn't a squip, but it's about like peer pressure when you're a kid and yeah. about, like being told to change. We don't want to change, you know. I've been through all of that in a more, in a more real world situation. Um, with bullying and with uh, uh, like kids at school um, and peer pressure on drugs and things like that. We, you know, we've all been through things like that. And so I've, I'm so similar to Jeremy. When I was a kid, um, I wanted to change everything about myself to be cooler. And then in, the, I think it was year 12, I'd moved to a new school for college and realized actually I can be whoever I want to be. In fact, because I went to a college, a new school, and I thought, this is the time I can totally reinvent myself because nobody knows me. And it took me about two months and I went, don't like this. Don't like this one bit. Like I was pretending to be cool and people were like believing it. And I was like, I don't like this one bit. So I, not you. I went back to being, I sat alone in music practice rooms writing songs. That was, that was my college experience. It was but cool. that was you though. That was the thing. That's what you wanted to do. I loved it. It yes. was the years of, of school I'd had 
yeah that's it that's what that's what you do you, you need to do what you want and not what anybody else wants you to do or, yeah. and that's anyone in your life not friends family anyone it's just what you want to do 100 yeah. percent. yeah uh, i second that with millie and eddie uh, sorry millie and erin hi erin they asked did anything go wrong on stage so i think you've talked about the glasses but in general did anything go wrong on stage during a performance so blake patrick anderson <laughs> I could not just, naming I could, names. I could not name names. Blake Patrick, uh, 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 Ake Natrick Panderson. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> no, Blake. So Blake and I, Blake played Michael to my Jeremy. So we were best friends in the show. Um, and we were, and still are, really good friends in real life. And that meant that that came on stage with us. And in moments we would stare in each other's eyes and just laugh. And, and that does happen. But when it happens in Two Play a Game, which is a song that the beat goes, and if you lose it, you're gone. Like there's no coming back in. Um, so when we, so we had these bean bags, um, and they, the floor was very slippy, and the bean bags would just, just, just slide away, and they were, we wouldn't sit on them right. Um, we had controllers and I once so we chucked them up in the air and they would land in each other's hands and once they just hit each other in the air and the batteries hit the floor like there weren't batteries in them but the battery pack went flying Fine. Um, so many prop things there were so many props in the show there were many many nights where Squip squad Squip Zone pe members would have to hand us props that have fallen off the front of the stage <laughs> Like more than you sh more than should happen in a in an eight show a week show, um, but the best one was actually the very very last show that we've done, uh, which was the Sunday where um, we we actually did a, a a special show. It was the very last. It was obviously lockdown was starting to happen, um, and uh, we had quite a few members off for for because it was the time when people were like. If you've got a cough, don't go into work. And, no. and we had a f we had quite a few cast members self isolating just in case. I don't think anyone actually ended up. Well, no one was being. Well, we, we don't want to talk about that. But there were quite a few people at home, um, and uh, and we had we were one cast member down. So we had every swing on stage, and we were still one cast member down. So our assistant director sat at the side of the stage and had to just read in the character, because and he gave this amazing speech. At the the top of the show and said feel free to leave if you want to like get a refund and see it a different time um it, with the full version but this is what we can give you and we'd love to give you a show because otherwise we'll just have to cancel um and the audience were like yeah give us a show and it was the, um, an amazing amazing experience but blake and i were on stage for just before mike in the bathroom this really intense scene where i call i say like um get out of my way, like loser, I call him a loser, I'm remembering my lines, I call him a loser, <laughs> but before this happens, before I'm like really angry with my friend enough to call him a loser, he has these alien monster hands on and his glasses fall off his face. And the 300 people watched Blake Patrick Anderson and his glasses were like mine, so they, they flipped down on their own. So he had these massive gloves on and was like this for about 30 seconds and on stage 30 seconds is so long yeah and we just both laughed openly and we had to compose ourselves and then re return to the scene and remembering it is it is oh my god some of these scenes like that's what i go to theater for not not obviously exactly. i want to see a show but they're the moments that when you do get to see them you know they don't happen very often but yeah. they're great oh amazing and they're so embarrassing to be a part of, but remembering them is, is very funny. Oh, definitely. And as, a, as an audience member, I don't, like, there's very few audience members that would think, oh, I want my money back, or that's yeah, terrible. Yeah. Because you're human. You're only human. You're not a, a robot. So you, everything won't go perfection all the time. No. So, like, I, I can think of a few moments, like, big names have even lost on the stage. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, hell yeah. And, and not just pantomimes, like you think, oh, pantomimes, pantomimes, you'll lose them, but uh, you lose a lot of people in pantomimes, let's be honest, but um, on, on musicals where you shouldn't, it's, it's great fun. Like, oh, yeah. it's
Oh, because you know it doesn't happen very often. Like, I've had friends from like really serious musicals, like Les Mis, recite stories of like Les Miserables, and you're like, when, when do you laugh? Like, when they were like, on my own, mate. Hilarious. I was like, okay. <laughs> I don't, it's, uh, okay. I don't see that one, but okay. Not all human and mistakes are made. And the, it, the funniest things are like when it's so funny when you're doing something the same time, the same way eight times a week and then something just, it might not be funny to an audience member, but if someone makes a tiny mistake, for us that's hilarious because we have seen, we get this like, it doesn't become monotonous, but doing the same thing eight times a week, you fall into a pattern. That's the word, pattern. And then when something strays out of that pattern, it's really funny. Aye, no, 100%. Yeah. I said, something, something you don't expect happens. Yeah. It's not in the script, or it's not in the choreography or whatever, depends what it is. Yeah, definitely, it's, it's, it's hilarious. Um, so, so TJ asks, uh, has there ever any been bad experiences backstage? Bad experiences? Yes, backstage. Definitely not. I mean, the, the cast, for me, personally were absolutely incredible i mean actually i can speak for everyone and say we all loved each other um we were all so kind to each other backstage i mean i, I can only speak personally and say that everyone else was so kind to me in that first act it's, i mean throughout the show but especially in that first act when i had 30 seconds off stage literally as i walked off stage i was handed a water bottle and then downed it and and gave it to someone because i didn't have time to go to a shelf take like that was the time i needed people and they were there for me, and it was really, really nice. Um, but I definitely had things like, I'm going to go back to Blake Patrick Anderson. I mean, he comes <laughs> up again, okay, naming no names, <laughs> no names. Um, but he um, he had a a pre show ritual, which was <laughs> so I was topless backstage before every show, not just by choice. Um, but I would go on, and I would I was J Jeremy was topless at the top of the show, so I had to be topless backstage, um, and he would just come up to me. He would wash his hands before every show. It's just a thing he would do. I mean, one washes, you should wash your hands, kids. Um, but he would wash his hands before every show. And with really cold, probably still wet hands, he would just clasp me like, like that. And like, and I, I was like deep red, I always do this before every show. I try, I try and really get into the character. And he would just go on my chest and back. And I'd be like, oh! But that was for every show, eight times a week. It was, that was, and uh, like huddles, nice little huddles after shows. Um, I accidentally kissed Miles three times. Now you would think once is like, <laughs> twice is a coincidence, three is that it happens. You can accidentally kiss another member of your cast three times, completely by accident. Okay, now explain, how did you manage to do it by accident? I don't want to. And that's good. No, I will. I will. Um, so the first one, no, I can't leave you on that kind. The first one was uh, a total, like, almost just bodies touching. So we had a huddle and I left the stage last. So I joined the huddle. And as I joined the huddle, Miles's face came up to see who was joining the huddle and literally went up into each other's lips. And it was funny and we laughed about it. But then the second time it happened, it was, uh, it was re something really similar about the beginning of the show. And so we, <laughs> I had to try not to look at him throughout the show because I was laughing about the fact that we'd kissed for a second time in like six days. Um, and I honestly can't remember how the third one happened, but I remember telling the story of how we kissed three times by accident. And I promise you, they were all totally, like none of them were like scripted, like, oh, this will be funny. It just like huddles and 10 people in a really small space looking up and going, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It was hilarious. But it had to be the same person. Mm. It was the same person, yeah. Saying nothing? Well, no. I'm saying nothing. No. <laughs> a no. Moral underscore cat, again, didn't leave a name, unfortunately, but their Twitter name, a, no Twitter, sorry, Instagram a name. She asks, how much time before starting Be More Chill did you have to rehearse? A month and a half, about, maybe even That's a month. Not that long. So it was about half, it was about, it was a quarter of the way into January we started. So I think maybe just under half. So about the 12th of January, I want to say we started rehearsals. And then we opened maybe coming up on the end of February. We officially opened. I think press night was in February. So 
who must have had previews for a week before that. Um, so it was it was quite intense, um, but it was so much fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, yeah, the, I missed out on quite a lot of the the funniest bits because because I was in almost every scene, and we had two rehearsal rooms, so people would run different bits. I'd have to flick between rehearsal rooms and and bits would get done without me and then I get slotted in and that mostly happened during the dance calls because I wouldn't dance I just kind of I always say this I do the Jeremy like perplexed like I just kind of go "Ooh, you're dancing like that's that was my role in the dances so I didn't have to be there for the hour and a half long dance calls that were super tiring but I'm told all of the banter happened in so <laughs> I like missed so many in jokes that people would do backstage and I'd be like oh, what's, what's funny, guys? And they'd be like, I, um, yeah, but, but, it, oh, I'm, but I'm doing that, oh, it's so hard being the lead. Oh, I just did that tonight. That was horrendous. Oh, it's so hard being the lead. I just miss out on the banter. Um, but no, but it was good fun. And the rehearsal period was amazing. But I, I, um, I remember, in fact, I remember being given an hour to nap. I was, I was, uh, an hour was put on the schedule because I, I, I needed a nap. You didn't need to, you were, you were that old that you needed a nap. Yeah. I, and I was such a diva that they thought, we'll just give him a nap. We'll give him a nap time and he'll come back and he won't be cranky. He'll have yeah. a, yeah. he'll have a nice cookie and hot milk and go for his nap. And, yeah. But I'm told, I'm told. And I, I did ask this directly. I said, was Will Rowland as bad as I was? Was the two Wills, were they as bad as I was, like, for sleeping and, like, just any time you could, just go on it. Um, and uh, Stephen, the director, said he had to, sometimes he peeled Will Connolly off the floor because he would just be in a corner napping. And he'd just go, yep, on stage. And Will would just get up and go. And it was, so, so I'm not alone. And I, I didn't feel so bad about it. So I thought, no, at, least, at least it's not just you. No. Yeah. yeah. Did you not think of changing your name to Will? No. I, I was told to oh. fans. Actually, I was I was um I was informed that I was I was a failure. I was um I'd ruined ruined the, the pattern. Uh but uh but my I asked my mum actually and she said no. So there you go. Yeah. No, nah, we, we like Scott. You're you're being I, different. I like Scott. Keep, keep Scott. Like uh, so so Jeremy asks, uh, coincidence. But Jeremy asks, if you could play any other character in the show, who and why? I think you've kind of answered that. Yeah, I, I, I still stand by Christine because she has the best song, which is a guy that I'm kind of into. It's so good. And the um, intro was, I basically, I would, when I was listening to the soundtrack before we, we started rehearsal, I would listen to a guy that I'd kind of be into and then just keep skipping back to the beginning because I think the, Dun, 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 dun. It's so sick. I don't even know if that's it. That is the intro, isn't it? It's somewhat. Yeah, it's I. And I so so well orchestrated. I would just keep listening to that bit. Um, but Miracle did that so well. Uh, but then the obvious one, which is I can't sing it, but I'd love to be able to sing Michael in the bathroom. I actually haven't got the range. So Blake is sensational at that role. Um, and at that song, but I it just goes just above my range. Uh, it does go slightly high, doesn't it? A bit, yeah. a bit. It's it does. But um, Joe Iconis, the writer, was really the composer was really um, brilliant about being like, if you need to take anything down or up, whatever you want to do, I'm just I'm not pressed about anything. I'll just do it. And it was that was a quite a nice like almost a crutch in the rehearsal periods where I could be like, I know. If I'm struggling, or if I don't think I can sing this eight times a week, I can just say, and it will happen. Like it, it didn't, um, but it was really nice to know that it could just happen. Yeah, yeah. You good. didn't have that much. You didn't have the pressure of, God, that, that, I don't know if I'm going to hit that every yeah, time. And keeping that inside, I could, I knew I could just say it, if, and yeah. there was no judgment. So that's that's really good because a lot of shows, yeah, I've talked to a lot of people and. They've never bad mouthed anybody, but they've said they, I don't think they've had the same confidence in that respect as you. Yeah. They'll just speak up and things. No, I, I know for a fact things like, like I'm not going to name shows, but West End shows have been um, on for a long time. Don't they? Don't have that freedom. No. They're done the same way every time. 
the actors change, but they're they they're not they're given numbers and they're given you know uh, places to stand. Uh, uh, and, just have it Yeah, but I you know our our show that came over from Broadway hasn't been running for thirty years, so I was given the creative freedom to to make the character my own, which was a really really nice thing. Yeah. So you mentioned Broadway there. I think we'll kind of touch on that a bit. You you mentioned obviously Broadway. It came over. Um, from from Broadway, it wasn't a massive success in Broadway. It was it was a bigger success off Broadway than it was on Broadway. Yeah, when it when it actually went to Broadway, it didn't really take off. Yeah. So are you surprised it's taken off? I would say it's taken off more in the UK than it has in the US. Yeah. Well, the show is, that. the show is quite different. Um, we we I say we. It was a creative process of 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 the people who were part of both the productions, like the director and the they. They, even though they were transferring a show from Broadway, they were still thinking, how can we make this better? How can we, like, not trim, but um, how can we mould it so that it, it's even, even smoother, even better to get from, you know, point A to point B, which is the beginning to the end and a nice bit in the middle. Um, like, how can we make this even better? And I really respected that from an actor's perspective being like I know I'm in a room with people who are really trying to create something good here yeah. and not just and not just like recreate what's been done because it's been done so well um and it was really nice to be in that room but as you say like it even actually the conversations we were having uh you know it it was a show that works really well in a small theater uh and so it worked really well off Broadway and it I, I think it worked really well off West End and I we're, we're quite blessed in London that we have West End theatres that are smaller. Yeah. You know? And so to say it won't work in the West End, it isn't necessarily as true as it might be in America because the Broadway theatres are mostly big, massive Massive. theatres to fill, you know, because Broadway shows are big and uh, the only Broadway show I've seen is Newsies, but it it was massive and it was like big uh, in your place, Broadway. Um, But, our, you know, our show just really works in a small, intimate space. And so it really worked well off-Broadway. Off and it was right to transfer to Broadway because it worked so well. You can't not transfer a show that blows up and sells oh, out in minutes, you know. Like, um, but, but I think, yeah, I, th- I think it, 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 it wasn't that it didn't work, like, with what they did. But I think it was just the space they were in. Um, they weren't aided. It wasn't that it didn't work. I think they weren't aided by the space they were in. Uh, no, I hundred percent, and I don't. I'm, no, that was nothing against the creatives or the the cast or anything, because I've seen the, the Broadway production not in real life, but the police are listening, so I'll not say anything. Uh, <laughs> I, I I managed to see the to see the Broadway, and it was fantastic, mm. like the cast and everything. So I'm not. There was nothing against cast or. No, yeah. Well, they were. Yeah, it's just the, the the sales didn't work in Broadway, uh, mm. as well as they they were hoping. Which is a real shame. But then it, that that. You know, it's it's um, it's it's where musical theatre is going, and everyone might not quite accept that. You know, the the generic musical theatre uh, audience of the past might not quite be ready for what's coming, um, but we are coming. You know, this new breed of musical theatre, which is so exciting. And well, this is definitely a hundred percent real new, uh, new musical theatre. Like yeah. this has no connections to Les Mis yeah. or Phantom. No yeah. disrespect to the, the older generation, but... Oh, it's a bit, but um, it's new and it's happening. Yeah. Like things it's, like... Um, what... Uh, there was a... Um, God, I can't remember the name, and this is really embarrassing. An amazing show on Broadway that's had to close, um, and an old show has actually replaced it. Oh, music... It was in the Music Box Theatre. Uh, about... Um, oh, no. Oh, no. No. I, I am terrible with theatre names on Broadway. Uh... It was uh, say my name, Beetlejuice. So oh yes, Beetlejuice. Had to close. I think they might they might go on tour. I don't know what the, the rumours are, um, but that was. Those uh, rumours of West End. But that's rumours. That is hundred percent rumours. I, I really <laughs> well, there's a, there's not a part for me in that show. Um, maybe in ten years, uh, but. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I call you know shows like us and and, Be- and Beetlejuice are what I call the new breed of musical theatre, which is coming and it's coming hard and fast, and it's blowing up. Um, but it you know it'll work in in off Broadway and off West End 
theatres, uh, and it might not quite work on Broadway or on West End yet, but it bloody will, and it'll be all the West End theatres soon. And I can't wait for that. Yeah. I think it'll be all. I think you'll be hard pushed to get the sign time. Abdomen, is it mouse trap? I've never seen a mouse. Mouse trap, yeah. Mouse traps there for. Uh, I'll stay, and yeah. uh, the sign time will be lamez for a long, long while yet. Sometimes what got me into musical theatre. <laughs> I love Mason Sontan, but but Jason Robert Brown, um, Joe Iconis, and the incredible people who wrote Devon Hansen, whose names I can't remember, but they are. Yeah, Paskin, Benji Paskin, yeah. yeah. But they are. Apologies. They wrote for Smash as well, didn't they? Um, they wrote for Smash, they wrote for Great Showman, Great Showman. Yeah. La La Land, and I, oh, I, I Just their work is oh, sensational. Yeah, no, they definitely are. Um, that's terrible because I'm a massive one to the eight. Eight Hansen fan and cannot think of the name. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, so, Zach asks, do you recall any changes between rehearsals and the stage production? Were there any major changes? Major changes. Hmm. <laughs> there was definitely big ones and we definitely made like snap decisions. Um, uh, Two play game was meant to be on chairs. We scrapped that. Oh, I know. Can I... Chairs didn't work, big time. Uh, in fact, we had about six weeks of rehearsals on chairs, and then in the theatre they brought in bean bags the day before opening. The day before opening. I can't even picture picture a chairs. Do you know that I couldn't picture you in chairs for that scene. It doesn't. Yeah, it just didn't work, and uh, logistically it didn't work. Like sliding them on. Like, we would have had to have stage hands come on stage, and that is where you can avoid that, you do. You know, yeah. if that has to happen, it has to happen. But where you can avoid um, giving the audience a reminder that we're in a show, you know, beanbags coming from nowhere, you're like, oh yeah, but someone coming on in all blacks and like sliding on a chair, you're like, no. I know, that's completely different. Yeah, so, so that was really scary, I remember that like coming out of nowhere, two beanbags sitting on the stage. Because it was the beanbags we used for um, one of the interview things, which was like being chill with, or ch chilling with. It was the chilling with beanbags. So we did these interviews with each other. You did. Chilling with. And we sat on those blue beanbags. And then they were out of nowhere on the stage. And I thought, oh, someone must be doing a chilling with. And then they, they called us in. They put everyone on break. And Blake and I <laughs> were called up to the stage. And they said, we're going to use beanbags for tomorrow's show. And I was like, what? Because all, all of it had been done on the the idea of being able to put your hands on a solid surface and not, jump, a, not a beanbag that goes as you put your hands on it. Oh, it was a nightmare. It worked, ended up working really well and it was so much better than chairs, but that day was really scary. Yeah. The only way I could see that is if it was gaming chairs. It was, no, it was, it was literally like I have no solid like solid, um, like school chairs, the chairs that we used at the beginning of the show where people sat on them. Yeah. The stuff and yeah, it was, it was scary. It was scary stuff. I know, I'm glad, I'm glad that was changed. I'm glad to see yeah, it. No, I, it, was, it was definitely changed for the better. It was an exciting change, but it was scary. I can imagine, oh, for an actor, I can imagine 100%. I'm not an actor, but I can imagine changing, the, and that quickly changing things, I think. Oh, yeah. 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 I can definitely imagine that. So, so some random artist too, Again, didn't leave a name. Uh, they asked, what is the hardest part of working on being more, being more chill? Um, the hardest part? Uh, that's a really difficult question. I, I loved the entire experience. I think I talked about the, um, the, how tiring it was to, 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 to rehearse Jeremy. It was really tiring. Uh, there was a lot, but also I, I can't say it wasn't tiring to be, be in the other parts in it because I'm, although I, I couldn't be in the dance course because I was doing other things. I was doing other things where I was sat down writing and reading. Whereas the other, most, the other, the other members of the cast were literally like sweating buckets in the other room. So like that show, it, Be More Chill is just hard all round to do and rehearse. Um, the like the tiring nature of it i've been i the show i was on before was stressful but it was never it was definitely not tiring um it was a play so there was no dancing and and singing and, and learning it was just learning lines and then 
exploring your character you know the stuff you do with yeah, and um, knowing where to go and stuff yeah, deep into i was it was a, i don't know if you you say you were doing the research on what i've done before the show i did before being more chill was so far opposite to not character and being more chill so i was um i played a, a 17 year old rapist yeah that mm -hmm. yeah. Much, you know me you know that just sounds like jeremy yeah so it was just the total opposite experience and um but it, it was stressful and uh and a very different obviously very different experience getting into the character um, i can imagine yes but but it was not tiring be more chill is unbelievably tiring to do like physically knackering i at one point my the the cast were they got me taking um i've left them at the rehearsal space so i haven't taken them in a while uh magnesium tablets because i was doing so much more exercise than i i've ever done in my life like <laughs> this is your chance to bulk up and i was like <sighs> so i was just popping magnesium tablets like before a show it was crazy it was it was really funny um and i did a lot of a lot of it was tiring on the voice yeah can imagine uh so i did a lot of pret pret a manger uh oh what are they called ginger shots ginger and apple shots yeah ginger shots they're, they're lifesavers if you another tip for going into musical theatre, pret a manger, ginger and apple shots. They are they can they can get you through a whole day of rehearsals on like on like a, a dodgy throne. I remember the one just when you mentioned that, I just thought it was a So I'm sure it was is it T Evan Hansen or was it half a sixpence? I can't remember. The no coward, obviously there's a pet manger just at the end of the road. Yeah. Of of the, that street. And I can't remember which musical, whether it was just recently or if it was half a sixpence. But one of the musicals that were there, they stopped doing them at that play. They ginger and apple shot, and they were like, they, we, "We just can't do this." And uh, the, <laughs> right. they actually, the, the whole theatre signed this petition and put an end to them. That's amazing. That is. Uh, I can't remember which musical I'm off the top of my head, but I remember that happened, like somebody talking about that and saying that they had signed this petition to get in. They brought them back, and they'll oh. never get unless the actual like company get rid of them. And that story will never get rid of them again. <laughs> no, yeah, no way. Yeah. Even if the company got rid of them, that, that store would buy out all of the ginger and apple shots. Yeah, they would just buy, yeah, just, just send them all to this. Just send, send them all send them to the West End. <laughs> Anyone in the West End, just send it there. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, they've got me through so many days. They're amazing. I don't think they'll ever get rid of them. I think the, I think a lot of actors swear by them. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So, so Eloise asks, what's your favourite part to perform in Be More Chill? Um, so the the looking back, the most fun I think I probably had was the um, the end, the whole end sequence. So the 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 play, I think we called it the play, the play sequence. Basically performing the play and then it, it going wrong and um, like the script trying to take over the world and all that spoiler stuff. I shouldn't be saying. Um, <laughs> I watch what you're saying. Let's like, not get into trouble. <laughs> um, but like. Uh, the, yeah, so that was the most fun, but I also remember dr dr sometimes dreading it on a on like a sat on like a Sunday, thinking, "Oh my god," because it, it, that was that was a lot of the fight sequences and the physical. Like I had to be on it; my body had to be tight to make sure I wasn't injuring myself. And so when you're really knackered on a Sunday, on the eighth show of a week, and you're like this backstage, and then you have to go on and run and. And it, it wasn't overacting, but it was a, definitely a level up from what you were doing in the first act. Like yeah. the first act was a lot of exploration of Jeremy and, and it was really great as an actor to, to I could internalize things and you could see them. It didn't matter how small they were because they were, I could, I was singing a solo number. Like you can see me, the thoughts I was thinking. Whereas yeah. in a number where like, I had to like fake punch Blake, like I can't internalize that. I have to actually do it. And so my body was knackered. Um, yeah, I can imagine. So like on the night, on the actual day, sometimes I would dread doing that. But thinking back, that was the most fun we had, like rehearsing it, doing it. Like, especially over the first show of a week, that was the most fun. That was like, I'm looking forward to getting like, we do a fight call every day. So, so we don't injure ourselves. And, and I'm gonna show you that there, that little purple mark on my fist. Yes. Um, that will be forever there, where I accidentally punched the um, the back wall. 
Oh, God, that's what you do, yeah. In a fight call, uh, which we do to make sure we're safe, I, um, I was fake punching Blake. I do like an uppercut. He does the sound. Oh, no, I did... We both oh. do a sound. We both do a sound. So there's a slapping sound from him and there's a punching sound from me. I don't want to ruin the magic, but it's, I'm not punching Blake in the face. Um, but uh, I just scraped my hand on the back LED wall, which is like bumpy. So it's not like a straight wall. So I it properly and I bled and I had to do, and there were people there that I mentioned this to at the stage door and they thought it was like a weird character choice. Um, I had a plaster uh, on my hand, but it's in a really odd place. So it like the plaster was like going over this bit. Yeah, of my yeah, hand, good. And it kept coming off. So then they put mic tape on it, more mic tape, until almost my whole hand was covered in mic tape by the end of the show. <laughs> and it was so embarrassing. Um, but that was, that was why, you, I mean, that's why you do a, um, a safety check at the beginning of the show, a fight call. So that doesn't happen during a show. But that was, it was quite ironic that during the fight call to keep us safe, I punched the wall. The whole point in keeping you safe, it, you, you, you ended up injuring yourself. But that's me, you know. That, that, that sounds like, um, Certainly sounds like a Jeremy thing, but definitely sounds like a Scott thing. Oh, uh, that, yeah. getting, getting to know you more through this, I'm definitely sounds like something Scott would do. Oh yeah, 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 that's what you get when you cast me in a show. I mean, it's like it almost comes with the, it comes with the job. It comes with me. It comes with the actor you cast. It comes with the act. It's actually on the CV. You just didn't read the small print. Yeah, yeah, it's really, yeah, it's really small. I put it in size two, but it's there, and you can't yeah. see So don't sue me. That's. <laughs> Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so so Rukasaka, which is like a tw an, an Instagram name. I don't think that's the real name. I could be wrong, but I don't think that's a real name. Is asking, what's your favourite thing about acting in general? Acting, um, being someone else. So I, I I I do have love for myself. Like I've 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 been through many years of, of like as I said, I'm not delving deep here, but we've all been bullied in secondary school. We all hate ourselves at one point. Um, but I, I, you know, you get through that and you, you learn to accept and love who you are. But I really, really love pretending to be other people and getting that chance to just like be someone else for two and a half hours a night, eight times a week. And when you fall in love with that person, like, like I did with Jeremy, um, and unlike I did with the character in the play I did just before, that I had about two very different experiences. Um, but they're still almost as amazing and as fulfilling mm -hmm. um, jeremy i fell in love with and i i would uh i would like look forward to becoming every night but matt who was the the character that i did for the, the not nice one it was it, it was really bad for my mental health but i learned a lot and i learned about a lot about who i was through him and who mm -hmm. i did not be obviously um uh, and uh and how far I could take that journey of becoming someone else without hurting myself. And I learned that by hurting myself. So I, it's obviously a horrible thing that this boy has done. And some people method act, you can't method act that, that, that would be a crime. But there was, there was obviously a, I did a, a lot of like convincing myself that I had done this act to make myself react in the way that one would if you had. Um, and it was a really difficult journey. And I learned a lot about acting and I learned a lot and I learned a lot from the other actors in the show um, who were like uh, older actors. I was trying to know how to put that, but they, they were, they were adults, you know, I yeah. don't see myself as an adult um, and they've learned a lot and they taught me a lot. Uh, and it was a difficult experience, but then you get a show like Be More Chill and it's, I mean, it's in the title. It's this amazing, chill, chill, beautiful experience. And you're like loving it just being someone else that is so cool and loved by so many people like Jeremy is like, he is a character that 300 people a night were like, I want you to succeed. And that is an amazing feeling like to have 300 people stand up at the end of the night because you've got the girl like, and just going like, and you've learned a lot about yourself and you've become a better human being. 300 people being like, yes, boy. And you're like, yeah, I, I am a better person. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Yes. No, I do. Um, that's very true. Yeah, exactly. The, the both part, no matter what you part you play, it does mm. teach you. Like I can imagine, it teaches you a lot about yourself, and it teaches you a lot about acting and stuff. So yeah, that, that's a good answer. Yeah. Lewis, he wants to know what 
did you do to prepare for playing the role? Did you go and see the Broadway show or read the book? So I, I uh, know to both of them. So uh, Blake and I had a conversation. Firstly, the, unfortunately, by the time I'd been cast, Be More Chill had closed on Broadway. So I had no opportunity to go and see it. And I was not so for, fortunate. I, I didn't watch a bootleg. Um, <laughs> uh, and obviously there are a load around. And I did, I think I found a video of, um, of the opening. No, yes, yes. Not a bootleg. The rehearsal video they'd made of the opening. They did, yes. Um, so I can say that. I can, I can openly say I watched that. I watched that. <laughs> that. But that is pretty much the only thing I watched because Blake and, Blake and I had a conversation about this. Blake was much better than me. He didn't even listen to the soundtrack. Um, we, we didn't want to try and recreate what they'd done or what had been written in the book. Although the piece was based off the book and there would have been some insight into the character, I wasn't necessarily playing the Jeremy that was in the book because the show has changed, the message has changed, a lot of the stuff has changed about Jeremy. Um, and so I was open to just receiving the script, the redrafted script they'd done for the London production uh, with the different songs and the different tunes and the different things um, and going from there and just like doing my own work instead of, uh, instead of and what I saw, uh, how I saw it at the time was I didn't want to read the book and kind of just copy someone else's work that they'd done. Um, you didn't want to be well, you wanted to be Scott. No offence to the Wells. No, exactly. And, and, again, and as you say, no offence to what they'd done because they were phenomenal. They were, yeah. just recreate what they'd done. No, I don't know how to say this. You want someone to say that about you. Do you know what I mean? And if, I'd, if I'd copied what they'd done, nobody would say that because they'd just be like, oh, he was just trying to recreate them. Yeah, he was just um, copying well. And you can never recreate someone better than they've done it because you're just trying to copy them. So if I did my own thing, then I have an opportunity to someone say, oh, you did, like, you did like Scott or that was Scott's way of doing it. And so I wanted to make it Scott's Jeremy, not, or Scott plus the director and the, and all the changes we made and obviously we explored yeah. it together. But it was, it was the, I'll say London because we all worked together, the London Jeremy rather than like the American brought over. Yeah, that's it. You didn't want, you didn't want the, the, the Broadway version just lifted and, and brought over. You wanted, yeah. you should have brought over, but you to then have your own say and, and the director and things to change it in certain ways, which was, which was great. Yeah, and that, um, that was supported by the director and the writers who had done the exact same thing, which was to redraft the script and to re-choreograph it. So they, they felt the same, which was good. I felt like I'd done a good thing by not, you know, not trying to copy because they weren't doing it either. So we were all on the same boat and we were, you know, it was really good. Felt good. Okay. Robbie, can we pause? That's oh, right, it's not pausing. Okay, so m moving on. Uh, Sky wants Sky underscore stuff wants to know what's your favourite slash most inspiring part of this experience. Wow! Um, well, some people go deep. Some fans definitely go deep. Really go deep. Um, I think uh, the people I worked with um, all across the board. So the cast, the creative team, but also actually the the theatre we were in. So I had a really good, still have, but be, before, even before Be Mature, had a really good uh, relationship with the other palace, which was the theatre we were in. So I'd done... you um, done a youth college, so it's theatre. I did MBMT there, but then from and that... Part of George? Yeah, brilliant show, one of my faves. Um, yeah. <laughs> so from that show, uh, my dad was in the bar with Kiki, who works at the other palace, who at that time, I think, wasn't quite at the position she is now um, and he was having a conversation and she was organizing an open mic and i'm a singer songwriter as well so and he, my dad said oh my god i must send you my my son's music um and she said oh i'll have a listen and a day later said oh my god as he released the music he must do her like a, a show at our, our theater and so i she got me booked she booked me in to do a solo a two-hour solo show in her in her in the the other palace's um studio space which is an amazing amazing space yeah uh, and so i had this incredible relationship and i did another show and then i made my own night called an evening of emerging voices um which was about 
trying to do what the other palace had done for me, for a load of other artists who haven't got the opportunity um, and make an, a night for them. I did like three songs per night. Um, and then most of it would just be these, these artists that were my friends that I thought deserved what the other palace had given me. Um, nice. And, yeah. uh, but what was really nice about then doing Be More Chill was the other palace went, oh my God, let's do something again and let's make it massive and let's make it like your night. And it was just really nice that people were going, this is like, this is your moment. This, let's go, let's do this. Let's like build on this incredible achievement you've got and make another incredible achievement and make these amazing memories. And these, like, I was just like blown away by the fact that people around me were going and, and it was, and they got nothing out of that. Like they didn't get, a, do you know what I mean? They might've made money on the night, but they could make money in any other way, but they were doing that because they knew it would be great for me and it'd be a great experience. And I was like blown away by the kindness of, of these people around me. Um, trying to just, was just was that your Scott Unplugged session, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it was, which is happening. We will do it. And it's in January, 2021. We've moved it. Cause then theater. Will I, had, I had tickets. Oh, have you still got tickets? Uh, yeah, I don't know where they are at the moment, but yeah. No, no, they are, they exist. You've still, they still exist for you. Oh, of course, I don't know. I don't have a regular register tickets. So, um, we will do it in 2021, in January, because I'm sure at that point, I mean, that will be less than 100 people, so I don't know what they, they'll call gatherings at that point, but it will probably be one of the first things to come back when, as theatre returns. So that's really exciting. Um, but that's so it's like it's things like that that made me go people really care about me and not just like like sometimes you think um like like be more it's all about being more chill and I'm just kind of like a vessel do you know what I mean but Joe Iconis did not stop reassuring me that like what people love about being more chill is the human beings that play the parts yeah. and I got that from the fans as well and it was just this amazing experience where everyone around me, fans, creative team, cast, the theatre I was even working in, were all just like trying to do this for me. And, and they didn't have to, and it wasn't for selfish reasons. And that really blew me away. Um, yeah, really, really. Because you deserve it. Which it's is fantastic. Why That's why it's got. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, no. I, tried, I tried to do. Don't go Jerry Monis. I won't, I won't start like picking up my nails. And that was my little, yeah. Um, but I try, I, in Scott Phone and Unplugged, the, I'm, I'm sure they will come back, but the, I had some really exciting guests that were gonna appear. And I, I you know, I'd ha I'll have to ask them again, but it, what I was, that opportunity hadn't been asked of them, but that was only because these random things that happened to me, I was no better than them. So I was like, oh my God, you must do this show because you're, more talented than I am and I've been given this opportunity and I want to give it to you because somebody had done that for me and that had inspired me to do it for them. So it was just this amazing like, like. Do you have any exclusives? Um, Is that it, Henry, you can see? I, I'll that's say what it was. I'll say that Blake had agreed to do it. Okay. He wasn't one of them. He'd obviously been given some amazing opportunities as well. But I definitely had some just like friends um, that have been in bands and things that like, I'm just like, you, like, did you watch um, uh, Andrew B, Andrew Bath Feldman's concert for his mum? He did, he did this amazing concert uh, in memory of his mum. I think so, yes, I think I'm sure I did. But basically he just showed off his amazing friends. Is that the one Sam was in, wasn't it? Sam Tutty did a bit. I didn't, I didn't get to watch, watch all of it. I've just seen clips. Um, I'm sure Sam was in it. Was he? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure because Andrew like showed off everyone he knew and it was just this amazing like, like um, extravaganza of talent. That's such a weird word to use. But <laughs> I was going to do the same thing with just friends I had from school that I was like, mm -hmm. you need to be seen by 100 people in a room and being told you're amazing because you are. Um, and that's what Andrew did as well. And I was really blown away by that. Yeah. That's, nice. that's, that's what Being More Chill did for me. It, made, it gave me this amazing experience where with this like, cycle of inspiration to just build people up because that's what people were doing to me. And I really just felt so inspired to just build all my friends up. Um, so that's, that's, sorry, back to the question. That was- Fine, not a problem. 
And she all that that same person, uh, Sky underscore self, asked, "What's the most important thing you've learned?" Um, to not push myself too hard, uh, because I can burn out. I never took a show off, and I was never going to take a show off, and I knew that from the get go. Um, but there, there did come a point where I thought, oh my God, I, I'm almost falling asleep during the show here. I need to slow down. I didn't like give any less, but in the time that I wasn't on stage, I was like this. Because there's no, there's no scope for like, this is like, this is the real, this is the big, the, what I, this is my big time. Like, I know it's off West End, but this is a massive opportunity for me and I couldn't, I can't throw it away by messing about and like I gave up alcohol um, because who needs it? Like, like I'm high on life, baby. That was the weirdest thing I've ever heard. But um, like, like I, messing around and staying up late and drinking a load, that was not going to do things for me the next day at, in shows. So I gave them up and I didn't do them because uh, I can't push myself too hard. And if I wanted to achieve the goal, which was for me not missing a show, I would going to have to do those things. So I learned a lot about how far I can push myself until I have to start like not messing about outside of the shows. Yeah, that's um, very true. Uh, I think you've kind of answered it, but we better ask just so she gets on mention. Melly asks, what's it like performing every night? Really hard, but amazing. So I'm, you realise how much you miss it when you're forced to stay at home seven days a week. Yeah. Um, because even when you've done nothing with a day and you've watched telly all day, you've played a bit of FIFA, you've maybe written half a song, but it's not quite enough to make you feel like you've done something a day. You can go to the theatre at six o'clock, you can perform to 300 people, um, you can make someone's day who want, has been waiting to see a show for three years and have them tell you that at stage door and go away and go, I just made someone's day. I don't need, like, I don't need to do anything else today. I don't care that I watch telly all day. I just made someone's day. I made someone's year. Like someone told me they, I was, I'd made their year by singing Lose a Geek or whatever and they cried. And I was like, that's it. That's like, that's like, she did. do you know what I mean? Like, I, I've got what I wanted to get out of this experience. Like, it was, it was so amazing to be a part of a show where people had invested so much of their lives into um, and I'd just come along and be like, yeah, I'll play that part. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, but it was like, and I'd, like, people always ask me, did you hear of the show before? And I say, ish, but not on a level that some of these fans had invested into it. Like, sometimes I felt like I didn't deserve to play the part because I hadn't, hadn't spent the years listening to it and watching the videos. But, but then they'd say, like, there was no, like, I was, like, told these amazing things at stage door. And obviously you don't do it for these compliments, but, like when people say things like there was no one else that could play that part, you're like, oh my God, stop it. And then they're like, I, you made my year. And that just, when it, especially when they're like nine, like a nine year old kid tells you they've made, you've made their year. You're like, I've done something good here. Like yeah. I, I, I'm doing something right with my life. I'm a part, I'm in the right place. Even if you like, it doesn't have to be the most amazing show, like for you. Be more chill, not be more chill, but I mean, the fact that I'm a part of this show, I'm in the place I'm at right now, you know, I'm working hard, I'm doing something right. And be more chill made me feel that. So, so thank you to be more chill for, and the fans for making me feel like that and accepted. Fantastic. Um, so, fandoms and my friends, Brilliant. Instagram name again, mm -hmm. um, asks nothing to do with be more chill. Uh, yeah. Probably the strangest question I've asked. If you could be any animal, what would you be? Um, that's a, an amazing question. I mean, there's uh, so many, but I would be a really small dog, like very specifically, or a micro pig, like only yeah. because. Only because I know how much love I would show a small dog and a micro pig. And I would just love to just receive that kind of love. Right, yeah. 
I would get from being a micro pig or a small dog. Like I'm talking dog like this big. Like once you- Handbag really, dog. Yeah, once you really couldn't leave on their own because someone would step on them. Like that, that's how much attention and love they need. That's, I'm, I'm, I'm that needy that I think I'd want to be one of them. That puts a lot, shows a lot of Scott Fall in there. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 you've, you've opened up a lot there. <laughs> yeah, my poor girlfriend who has to deal with how needy I, and needy I am for attention. As soon as I leave this, like she's cooking the dinner, I'm just going to like stand next to her like that, waiting for attention. <laughs> like hoping she'll just like give me attention. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. That's, that's Scott Foley. This is why we, we do this, to try and get some inside information. Uh, and that definitely is probably the most insider for me to have ever had, so that's good. Thank you, Ross. Uh, in, 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 San, in Sandy, or oh, insanely, sorry, I can't even read more handwriting. <laughs> insanely cool Sushi Kleinman. That is an incredible uh, first name. I, um, uh, that's... I think that's an Instagram name. I don't oh. think that's the actual name. Mm. Um, because obviously it's, it's a spin off from insanely cool Jared Kleinman. Uh, from Devon Hansen, I'm assuming. Um, do you like sports? I take it this is a thing. Yeah, so uh, there was, I don't even think the rehearsal period had started. So we were announced on the 11th or the 4th, I can't remember. One of them was the photo shoot. So I think the 4th was the photo shoot. We were announced on the 11th um, of December and then we started on like the 12th of January. So there was about a month over Christmas where my Instagram followers were going up. And I was getting lots of messages asking who I was, what I was about, the kind of way I was thinking about playing Jeremy, all those things I didn't, didn't yet know, you know. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I was being like, like, I was experiencing this part of Be More Chill that I just didn't know existed, this amazing fandom. And I was being introduced to it. Um, and I accidentally left my, uh, like, online active status on. So if I was online, someone could see if I had clicked Instagram. So if I'm sitting at 2 a.m. in my bed, looking at memes over Christmas, which one does, I think rightly yeah. so you should, you know, it's Christmas, no one's going to bed before 2 a.m. I was doing that and people could see that and would message me, go to bed, stop staying up late, go to bed, it's 2 a.m., go to bed. And that was happening every day until someone said, go to bed, Spork, and put it on their story. And that was it. I was called Spork. At the uh -huh. I was known as Spork Folan. There is now Spork Society. Um, like, and there's, I think there's the same picture of Scott Folan every day of me as a Spork. Like literally a Spork and then my face with a fork bit on top of it. <laughs> Quite sensational. I, and I must say I've never used a Spork. I'm English, they don't exist here. Um, it's a very American thing. Uh, KFC have them. Do, oh, I, I, honestly, I've been to KFC. They, ha they have other, uh, there are other fast food restaurants out there, but KFC does have them. <laughs> there are others. <laughs> We're not project placing, you know. No, no, no. I like McDonald's and I like KFC. Yes, like, there are other ones, but they, they do have them. I love a, I was about to say things I love from KFC. That's just an advert. Forget that. Why? No. I know, don't like, so let's not go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> it's not advertised. Fast food. And it's, it's not healthy. You don't like fast food. There's other restaurant choices. Yes. The salads. <laughs> um, Joan, she's not asking a question. She's, um, is she asking a question? Yes, she did. I've lost a bit. Me, there we go. Sorry, I forgot one. Mimi Kate, Katie, sorry, Mimi Katie. It doesn't actually ask a question. She's just saying something. Wants to say something to you. She right. says, "Just wanted to say that I loved your performance as Jeremy. I saw you on the twentieth of February. She was the one with the feeding tube." Oh, amazing! Right. You are the ideal Jeremy, and definitely my favourite between the two wells and yourself. Your rendition of "Loser Geek Whatever" especially was beautiful. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. I remember uh, meeting. That so, was yeah, I remember. Yeah, I thought that when she said that, I thought I'll take it you'll you'll remember with that. That so that I'll just say exactly how she wrote it. So I did. Oh, thank you. Um, so that was her opinion, not the opinion of West End Talks. And there um, are other, there are other Jeremys available, and 
and we would like to say that they are all wonderful actors. Yes, um, but yeah. Mimi Katie yeah. prefers you. Um, Joan asks, which of the shows you've been in has been the most fun and which one do you wish had more attention? Well, that's definitely Be More Chill. So I, I actually disagree. Be More Chill has got plenty of attention. <laughs> it's got enough, right? We're putting it to bed. I was in a show last year called This Is My Family, and I honestly think this is what she's re Joan is referring to. I'm not going to assume someone's gender. It's actually a boy's and a girl's name. Um, uh, so uh, an Instagram account was named This Is My Family, because I said something about it and they were like, oh my God, I want to know more about it. Um, but there's no recordings, there's no... So it was, it was me, my, my now girlfriend, and we met on that show. Um, so me, Kirsty McLaren, who's uh, nominated for an Olivier, for God's sake. Like, she's won one. She was in Our Ladies of Perpetual Sucker. Oh, right, yes. I thought I'd recognise the name, thank you. Yeah, so she was one of the girls in that. So they won one and were nominated for an Olivier. Um, and then it was James Nesbitt, who played my dad. Just Sheila, a small name. Sheila Hancock played my oh. grandma. And Claire Burt played my mum. And then Rachel Lumberg, who was the lead in, um, I mean, she's done so much, but most recently the lead in the band. Yes, it was. Yes, to take that and musical. So that, like, that was the cast. It was a, an unknown 17-year-old, an Olivier nominee and award winner, James Nesbitt. Sheila Hancock, a legend, Claire Burt and Rachel Lumberg, literally all theatre legends and little old 17 year old me. And it, it was in Chichester and, and it's one of them, obviously now theatre's in the place it's in, but it was one of them where it's still like, it might come to the West End, but it has to come to the West End. It's so good. It's so good. And if I, if I have any power in this, make it happen just message Daniel Evans or anyone at Chichester and say, is this is my family coming to the West End? Because it's so good. It was written by Tim Furr, who wrote the band. Yeah. Um, he works with that Gary Barlow. And he, in fact, he wrote the script for- The girls. The girls. And he also wrote- uh, uh, Kiki 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 film. He did, like, yeah. And like, it is, it's a fantastic musical film. It's not like any other musical I've ever heard. Like, no song. The reason we haven't done a- um, like a cast recording is because we'd have to just do the whole show because it goes from song to scene to song to scene. Like there were no I didn't have solo numbers, I definitely had solo lines, but I had no big, I had about maybe 40 seconds maximum of singing before someone else either chimed in with a song or a scene. Um, but I played, a, I had black hair, black nails, black eyeliner, um, or white, like a really like, like I was trying to be a vampire white face. Um, and it was quite, it was quite an incredible, incredible experience. Uh, it needs, it needs to come to, it needs to come to the West End. It really does. It, Stay it, coming closer to the camera will help you. <laughs> it really, really needs to come to the West End. Um, but, but then Be More Chill, Be More Chill can go too. I'm quite happy with that. I'd be happy. Either one. I'd just quite like to work. Just, just, just get him back to theatre. <laughs> just, get him, just get him back in there. Oh, I'm okay. loving this. Uh, Neil Lydia, you'll be glad to know. No worries. Uh, musicals in the bathroom, Instagram, wants to know, how do you write your amazing songs? Oh, I don't know. Firstly, thank you. That, that's a lovely compliment. Because I'm not going to, I'm going to ask the question, how do I answer, how do I write my songs? Because otherwise... I would sound quite vague. You answer the question that Sorry. was asked. Sorry, Sorry I will. <laughs> um, I don't know. So I, sometimes I write a song and I think, I actually can't remember writing that. I remember it just kind of, I remember the first time I played it the whole way through. Um, the, the cameos, I, so I have a cameo account now, which I really enjoy. Yeah. Selfless plug. Um, selfless plug. Well, welcome. Shameless plug. Um, uh, yeah, I, I do cameos now. I've sold out. Um, but basically, I, like, the, mo the thing I enjoy most doing on those cameos is writing songs for people. Um, so, uh, and I do about, I do like a verse, a chorus, a verse, and then an e like an end, like a half chorus. That, that I do, I, al I always do it that long, which, um, which means it's got structure, which is really useful for writing songs. So I always just like, 
get a tiny bit of information about the person and write a song about them. And that is so easy to, it's not easy, but so much easier to do than someone going, have you written, like write a new song. And I'm like, what do I, how do I, what, what's going on? Like what's going on in my life? Like I'm quite happy at the moment. I know we're in like a particular situation, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in fact next year, yes, n- next year, next month, yesterday is my one year anniversary with Kirsty which is the longest I've ever been in a relationship. So I'm quite happy, which is very, it's not, it's not good for writing songs. It's not great. It's not. No, if you look at most songs, most songs are sad. Yeah. So I, in fact, the most recent song I've written, um, I watched normal people and, and walked out without saying anything after one of the episodes and just went into the room with my piano and just wrote a song about it. Um, which I will release. In fact, we were in the park today making a video for it. Um, so, like, that's what I'm I'm stooping as low as writing songs about TV programs now because I've got I've got nothing like inspirational going on in my life. I don't think anyone's got much inspiration going on at the moment. But like, it's not at the moment, unfortunately. No, but it's it's um it, it's definitely a weird thing because I don't. Some people do like lyrics first and then music. I just like I. I sit down, if I find a chord I like, well, not just one chord, one chord doesn't make a song, but if I find like a chord progression I like, I'll go, oh, maybe I'll keep that for later. But I never think, what chord progression should I do? I just kind of sit down at the piano or sit on my guitar and play something until something comes up my mouth and then I just literally sing and write until I can start writing something down. And once I've written down like two or three lines, I have to finish it, otherwise it won't get finished. Um, because I hate going back to things. I hate thinking it's like a job. Oh, I must go and finish that song. I must, I must. I won't do yeah. it. I'm so lazy. Um, like, unless it's like a professional environment where I'm like, I have to be a professional now and it's a job. The minute that happens to my songs, I get bored and I don't want to do it because it's a passion for me and it's a, it's a hobby for me. Um, and so the minute it becomes like a job, I'm like, oh, no, forget that. I'll play you something I wrote ages ago. Like, yeah, so that's it's, I've got a weird, weird like it's it's one of them where it, like happens in the moment. Like otherwise, it won't happen. Because yeah, yeah, completely understand that. Yeah. So, so two more fans questions. Cool. Claire asks, of which do you prefer, TV, film, and stage, or stage, sorry, and why? Uh, um. At the moment, stage. But that's because at the moment you're on stage. Maybe. But also at the moment, I can't do stage. Like TV and film will be the first thing to come back. Um, And so it's one of them where the grass is always greener. So I'll always be like, oh, I wish I could do theatre. But like if theatre was first and come back, I'd be like, I wish I could do film. Do you know what I mean? Um, But I'll tell you the things I love about each one. Theatre is is like eight times a week so you can do it different every night and you can explore and you can get better um and you've got much much longer to to really explore a character film is an odd one film is very you get no rehearsals you barely get rehearsals i've only rehearsed once for a film um blinded by the light we had a 10 minute read through of the lines before we went on set uh and that was probably mostly because the scene was with the lead who you when you're the lead of a film like that you can't just learn all the lines you have to kind of just like learn the learn the sides you're going to do the next day the night before so the poor guy had barely like barely had a chance to read the script he was about to do i'd obviously learned i'm i was only in two scenes so i'd learn on my lines um so that was basically mostly for for the the lead um, yeah. that was pretty much the only you don't really get much rehearsal time and then they always say about film, oh, you can just do it again if you make a mistake. But you have to realise how many people you're letting down if you do that. Mm-hmm. Like these outtakes where people are laughing. I'd love to be a part of an outtake where a mistake has been made and people laugh. Because if you're on a film set, you've got four cameramen, at least, like there's three or four cameras. And then there's at least four people who are operating that camera. And then there's lights, then there's sound, then there's directors plus their the whole like circle of people around the director, which is like five, six, there's about 20, 30 people you're letting down if you ruin a shot. 
So that's a really stressful experience. But then watching yourself in a film is really amazing. You get to really, like you can never do on stage, you really get to pick apart your own performance and evaluate yeah. an actor. So I don't know. TV's, TV's the most fun, I must say, for actually doing, because TV is much more relaxed than film. Uh, TV, normally the, um, the deadlines are wider. So messing up is more fun, uh, especially in Brotherhood. We filmed it in front of a live audience. So messing up was part of the job. You were supposed to me mess up at least twice, I think, per show, so that the audience had a genuine laugh. Because laugh tracks, I don't know if you've ever really known how a laugh track is. When an audience is invited to a thing like this, they're told to laugh. You're told to laugh the same way that you laughed for the first take, which is really hard to do. So if we get recordings of the audience laughing genuinely, we just shove, they're just shoved in. Like, laugh tracks are so fake. They're real, they're real people laughing, but they're not necessarily laughing at the thing you just watched. They'll, they'll shove it in. If, I, if something later got a better laugh, they'll use that laugh and put it in the first joke. It's, it's so fake. It's so funny. And some, some shows do it better than others. And <laughs> things. In fact, oh, sorry. I very much remember uh, sitting in my dressing room for Brotherhood and my director coming in and I was watching, I was watching The Big Bang Theory and my director said something like, if we can be do it better than that, we're doing fine. Because the laugh track was so, it was like, ha 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 ha. Like, and we're like, oh God. Friends was quite bad at that with a laugh track. I, I remember Friends. Not a laugh track. Uh, no, I've not, have I? I've seen a few scenes, I think. Yeah, I've seen a few scenes. Quite funny. It's like, and, and you're like, oh my God. They stand uh, in silence like this. It's so weird. But that was what you had to do. It felt natural while people were laughing. But you take those laughs out, it's weird. Uh, Very weird. Yeah. Last fan question. Sorry, I love all three. That's all I'm going to say. That's, okay, that's, I think that's the, the, the easy way out, but we'll, we'll let you off for that. Uh, last fan question, Sarah asks, if you could be in lockdown with any character from Be More Chill, who would it be and why? So you're looking at characters here, you're not looking at actors. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we are looking at characters, but obviously I'm going to pick the characters based on the way that the actors in London portrayed them. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to pick London whoever um lockdown though lockdown i mean it's been quite long it's been what what 12 weeks something like that it was basically nearly three, yeah, three months nearly so nearly three months of, of intense like games nights and like you'd have to spend a lot of time with these people i love jeremy but i feel like <laughs> it would get a bit intense yeah i've got to say i wouldn't i wouldn't go into lockdown with jeremy i'm sorry Michael would be Michael would be quite fun because I'm a big gamer, so I would I would definitely enjoy gaming with either Jeremy or Michael. But Michael's a bit more chill. Um, but uh, but actually, reasons for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they will well, not go into because that spoils. But I'm going to talk about my neighbour has been doing a lot of that over the last three months, and we close our doors and our windows, and that's all I'm saying. I don't. If you know what's going on you know what's going on and if you don't st stay like that because you don't want to yeah. learn. You're, you're too innocent so that's good. You're not we, too innocent so you're innocent which is good. Our doors. And, and um, we play a lot of table tennis and it happens during that so we just go inside because it's so strong. Um, anyway, that only came from <laughs> Michael. Um, uh, maybe not Michael then because I, 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 I'm not a big, I'm not big into that. Um, Can I add at all hopefully? No, no I'm not. <laughs> like not, not necessarily just big into it. No, no, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm definitely not into it at all. So, so Michael, Michael's gone. Jeremy and Michael are gone. Um, it might be a weird one, like, like um, Jake, or like, like someone you just wouldn't expect. I'm obviously playing Jeremy, but I'm Scott here. Um, Jake. Yeah, probably Jake. Think, yeah. Mars, Mars played him so chilled out, like it was so funny how chilled out he was, and I just think. Like with things, like I've just, I'm right in my window. My girlfriend's just gone in mask and gloves to the shop. And that's quite a stressful experience with someone really chill. 
I feel like it'd be nice to just like do that without the stress and the build up of like like wiping things down and washing your hands. And I have like quite bad anxiety. And I just Which don't... Jeremy would have, I've got yeah, to say. Well, yeah. So I mean, I'm literally Jeremy. I, I, cats out the bag. Um, th- I feel like being with someone who was quite chill would, would counterbalance that, which is good. Which I am. My girlfriend's quite chill, so. That's good. That's good. Um, so that brings us to the end of the fans' questions. Well, All that's left to say is a certain thing that happened yesterday. Yeah. And that was the West End Talks Awards. And Be More Chill won Best Off West Pin Production. And you were there to, to accept the award. I was. I am. You I were. Was. So what, what, what have you got to say? You've got a, a slightly more time to talk about it now. So obviously uh, there was a fan vote. So the fans uh, voted for it. Uh, it's lovely. It's, um, it's an honour, obviously. Um, but it, it's, uh, it means a lot when, when you're in a musical that's obviously off West End and you've, um, uh, you've got a fan, I mean, we've got a fan base, an amazing fan base of, uh, of Being More Chill. Um, and our, our fans are what made the show, literally what made the show happen. Um, so we rely on them a lot. We love them a lot. Um, and they support us a lot, which means a lot. Uh, but, but you don't really, you obviously, you get that on a personal scale when people message you and say, you know, I love the show. I love what you did with the show. Um, but to, to, to get like a, an award, like the West End, the West End Talks Awards, um, it, which is a completely fan based, like, like a whole fan base. You know what I mean? It's like a load of people voting for something. It, it's, um, over 5,000 people. Jesus. That is a lot of people. Over 5,000 people voted. Wow. Wow. That means a lot because that's, you know, that's more than we hold in our theatre, our little theatre in, in Victoria. Yeah. So that means a whole lot. Um, and uh, so thank you. Not a problem. You were well deserved, I've got to say. Um, I was just glad it was nothing to do with us. It was a fan vote. <laughs> so we could blame on the fans for anything that wasn't happy. But you guys were... were we're obviously up for that. You were up for a few others, but they, they definitely you were up for the, the best rest of off West End production, but you, you won that one, so that's great. Best award. It's definitely the best award, so it definitely is, yes. Um so now all that's left for us to see is is the, the, the not so quick fire round. Right. Um it used to be called the quick fire round, but then Tom Gravy decided to call it the not so quick fire round, because nobody actually answered quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um so just as quickly as you can answer. What's your favourite musical theatre song? And that doesn't have to be one you've performed. Okay. Um, favourite musical theatre song? Well, my... Oh, my God. Um, I mean, my favourite musical is Parade, so it's going to be something from that, which is... So it's hard to speak my heart from Parade or Leo's statement. Yeah, that's a good, good, good choice. Yes. What to, would you? I will like go away now and be like, oh my god, I should have said that. Everybody says that. Don't worry. <laughs> Everybody has said that. And then we get messages back. Going, oh, I should have said that. And I should have. Like, oh, put this cookie. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, what is your dream role? Um, any role, regardless of age or race. What so, uh, I don't think it would be acceptable for me to play. Well. Well, I don't know. What it's a dream role. It may never have. It may my, not ever have. My dream role is to play one of the two boys in Bear, so Peter oh. or Jason, um, and it would blow. Peter, I could so see you as Peter. Yeah, I would so love to, but I also don't know what it's like to grow up and not be sure. Of, I, I mean, I've explored my. I don't want to talk about it too much, but you know, I'm no. in musical theatre. We've all. I don't know how to say that. I don't know how to say that. But I, I mean, I, I went to a drama school and I, I grew up uh, uh, not being a part of, of the norm and being mm-hmm. thrust out of it. And, and, and I grew up thinking that I kind of, I, I kind of had to be. And I was, I was, I was going to be, because that, like, in my primary You questioned school, yourself growing up. Yeah, I did. I did. I'm sorry. I'm trying to say that without diving too no, far. No. I questioned yes, myself I... growing up. Um, but I didn't. I didn't do it for long, um, and and I don't know how right it would be for me to play that role because I don't know how, I don't know what it's like to do that for 
Can I be honest, there's only been two productions in the UK, two big productions, which obviously was one last year in the vaults, and then one a couple of years ago at Greenwich and the Union Theatre. And yeah. both times, Jason has been played by a straight guy. Ja I, mean, I mean, I think Jason, Jason I would be able to um, relate to more because he doesn't struggle with it for too long. Do you know what I mean? And there's a struggle between... There is a struggle but between... I don't think Peter struggles. Peter doesn't really struggle. He struggles more with Jason. Yeah, so Peter's quite... Peter quite instantly accepts. Yeah. Jason is a real struggle between... And I think that... I, I, I think at a point in my life, I, I did. And I think I would be able to... To... I don't know, it's such a difficult... No, um, but that's... That's my great to... role. It doesn't necessarily mean I have to play it and I'm right. No, that's it. That's it. It's one that... A dream role doesn't always have to ha necessarily happen. Mm. That's why we like to, regardless of age or, or grace or anything, and those, if there's a role that you'd love to play. I would love to. Um, one yeah. from Peter yeah, Just because the songs are incredible and the story's incredible and the, the characters are incredible. Oh, the show is just fantastic. Yeah, musical. <laughs> uh, we had actually, we got, we had uh, Daniel who played Peter in the, the Vaults production. He was our first interview. Oh my God, that's amazing. Uh, and Michael Vinson, who is actually going to hairspray, but he played the original Peter in the Greenwich production five, five six years ago. Um, so I've actually had both Peters, uh, which without you've got uh, so we've we've had the full role of the London Peters. Yeah. We've now got the one that wants to play them, so you could be the next one. Uh, what is your dream gender bend role? Now that's um, not cross dressing. That's a role that's specifically female. Yes, I uh, would love to play. I said this on the live stream, and I think I stand by it. And I had a reason for it. Christine, but not female chill. Phantom of the Opera, Christine. Right. Okay, that's a good one. And that's only because, I, 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 if I'd answered dream role at the other, like the the dream role that a possibility I could actually play in a different way. I would have said the Phantom or I can't remember his name, the young man Raul. in Raul. Um, Raul. Raul. Um, because that is a, a style of singing that I will well, at least without a whole lot of training, I can't do. It's and so I applied that to the gender bend role. Um, because Christine, if I I mean if I was a woman and had a female vocal type, it would not be that. It would be <laughs> Poppy and it would be um just, Dan Juliet over Phantom with the opera. So I just <laughs> it's a role that I'd I'd just love to be able to do that sort of that sort of musical theatre, that sort of so see, you, you say to it you couldn't play Michael because you don't you can't hit that note, but then you go Christine, which is a way yeah, up here compared to, to, to Michael. Michael. Yeah. I'd like I can't to sing Michael in the bathroom because I can't go high enough, but let's go for the highest note in musical theatre. <laughs> Hey, hey, you said dream. I, I guess, I agree that. I agree that. <laughs> uh, last question. What is your top five shows? Now, they don't have, you don't have to be in them. Okay. Um, this is in no particular order, but uh -huh. with number one is Parade. Okay. By Jason Robert Brown. And then yep. the next one in no particular order. Be more chill because it's... Uh, I'm only thinking at first because it's to my left and I can see the words. Um, Probably something like Dear Evan Hansen is up there. Um, Bear the Muse, Bear the Pop Opera. Um, yeah. Oh, and Sunday in the Park with George. Oh, and Company. Oh, that oh. Sometime. It, all of Sometime. Just, just, your fifth one's at Sign Time. Just everything's Sign Time, right? Everything, yeah, everything. But Company and Sunday in the Park with George, those are my faves sometimes. Yeah, I was looking forward to seeing Sunday in the Park George, I've got to say. Yeah. Uh, that was obviously coming to Savoy. It, it's coming back. The sure Jim McAvoy has said it will come back. Yeah. Um, but just when and, and where, that's the thing. I actually I had an audition for Into the Woods just before, just before, um, well, just before the, people feel closed, I'll say that. Uh, and, uh, Into and, the Woods, what, West End? Uh, I think it was at the, the, just around the corner from where we were rehearsing, the old Vic. What's that going to your Vic, is it? I think. Oh. Well, I don't that's know. An, that could be an exclusive. <laughs> and, and if you Google that and find that out, you may have to cut that. 
Um, but uh, no, but it, it's put on spotlight. I mean, everyone knows, but uh, uh, I uh, thing is now we don't know if it'll ever happen. Yeah. So actually, you're probably fine. But it may never happen. I think it will. Into the woods is, well, is called then for. Then yeah, it'll come back again. But that production, you know, might never happen. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a real shame that a lot of things are like that. Oh, look, it's me. Ooh. You without glasses? Yeah, they um. Do you know what? I don't even think I'm wearing contacts now. I am. I am. I put contacts on for that day because they they said I was definitely not wearing glasses for the show. Um, like generally, because obviously yeah. it takes more coffee through. Uh, but they wanted. They were like, "Can we see you without your glasses?" And I was like, "Hell yeah!" Hell right. yeah! I always thought there was a weird in that picture. I have a weird like. It looks like I'm wearing a microphone, like here, like, like if I'm like, like there, because I have a weird, like the way I've bent my face. Well, like, there, there. Yeah, there. Looks like I've oh, got- Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, that's what I, I always thought that was a tiny little microphone. But, and, and then I was like, oh no, it's just my face. Just your face. Just my face. And then there the, the, yeah, the all are. It loves those pictures. The whole cast. I've such fond memories of that that very first day those were released. Um, I've I've never got I must say and I mean, it it did blow my phone stopped working because so many notifications came in. I've I just burped on camera. I don't care. Um, uh, I have not since turned like notifications off because of that day because um, I I normally get about hundred likes in a photo right and then be more chill if I upload a be more chill photo it will get about 4,000 likes. And that yeah. my phone can't cope with that. And it will all happen in a minute. And so my phone literally went, <laughs> my phone went to the color it is now and didn't unchange from that. I thought I might have to buy a new phone. It was, and that was the day, that was, that was the day that everyone yeah. wanted to reach out and be like, Scott, I'm so proud of you. I couldn't, I couldn't open my phone until, I, like, managed to, until I managed to get in, turn notifications off. Because it was like, it was just going, duh, 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 duh. Do you know what? That was, um, I don't know how I feel about that picture. I love that picture and it looks nice, but it does look a little bit like I'm an over actor because that was the point of that bit. Like that was the Shakespeare bit where I was like, like um, the script was controlling me and he was getting me to do Shakespeare in like a really Shakespearean way. And I'm worried everyone thinks that's how I portray Jeremy. Like I'm like, like Luther Geek, whatever's like. You've got that one, and then you've got the Billy scene. Oh, that's great. My actual, my favourite are the ones with Brooke, where she's about to kiss me, and I'm like, um, and the one with Miracle, which is really cute. Just, like, they're just, they, they're just some, they, they do some brilliant photos. Some lovely photos. I'm just going to finish in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, so our last task, last thing that we, we get everybody to do, okay. have you heard of the Ice Bucket Challenge? Have. You have. We're not going to ask you to put ice over yourself, don't worry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> activity, I was like, my dad's like rug, my lovely like chair. I was like, nah. Don't you worry, we're not going to ask you to do that. All we say is, obviously with the Ice Bucket Challenge, you did it, and then you had to nominate somebody. Yes. So, all we'll ask you to do is the West End Talk nomination. Okay. This can be anyone you want from theatre, film, or TV. Okay. Preferably somebody that you know. Yeah. Um, because the whole point in the, 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 the task is to try and get them in to do a West End talk. Yeah. You've gone through the pain, so now it's their turn. Um, it can be, as I say, anyone, it can be actor, stage, anybody from like off stage, anybody like that. Um, all we ask is you name them on the video, and then at the end of the chat, go on to Instagram, I know, sorry, Instagram, Twitter, put up a tweet to say, just done my talk with West End talks. Now it's your turn, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously tagging us and the, pe the person or people, because it could be more than one. Um, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. um, but who would you like to nominate? Can I nominate my girlfriend? Of course you can, yes. Because she's, she's one in Olivier, so she's, she's a bigger <laughs> name than me. I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm going to make that. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to do that. Kirsty McLaren, Olivier nominated actress. That's her full That'd time. Kirsty McLaren, ONA. I write it down when I introduce it to my friends. Uh, this is the this is the Olivier uh, nominee winner. Sorry, Olivier winner. Hi, yeah, hi, hi. 
So she nominated in this year's awards. Uh, no, she, she wasn't. She wasn't in a. She wasn't in a show. Wasn't in a show. It, was, it was last year, wasn't it? They won that. I think it was two. Years. Was, it two was it two years ago now? Yeah. Or does it make me feel old? No, was yeah. It two years ago. <gasps> oh. I mean, they they did that show for a lot of years. Um, yeah, she, did it. Like after that, she did Fiddler. In fact, she. I mean, weirdly, she was nominated because she was in the Fiddler on the Roof West End production. Mm -hmm. She was offered that production because she was in the original in um, the Menier. So she, she created that show with them. And then she was offered that and instead took the Chichester job where she met me. So I'm really glad that she decided to, to take Chichester because she was the lead in Chichester. Like, she, like the show was like on her shoulders lead. You know, like Jeremy, like he just... I was about to say, a bit like Jeremy. Yeah, she did not leave the stage. But even like, even in Act Two, like the entire, because it was, the um, the show was like her writing, her her doing her experience. Yeah. And everything was from her perspective. So it was, it was even harder than Jeremy was. Um, I didn't, like, she didn't even get like, I got Michael in the bathroom off and I got smartphone hour off. She didn't get anything like that. She got maybe 30 seconds at a time and then she'd have to come on stage. I bet you in the first act. <laughs> yeah. In fact, you know, I didn't leave the stage either, but so we had this fully working house. So I had a, an Xbox on stage, an actual working Xbox that I played Fortnite while, while um, on stage. Greatest experience of my life. I was paid to play Fortnite. Yeah. That sounds like a dream to a lot of people. Not me personally, but yeah, to a lot of people. Oh, God. Um, I was paid to nap because basically I would come, I think I came down maybe seven times during the act, but for the rest of it, I was on stage napping or um, playing Xbox. It was so, it was so sick. Yeah. Come to my second. Nabbing, yeah. I want to do that again. I want to get paid to play Xbox and nap. <laughs> we want Jeremy back. That's the first task. Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. Then you can do whatever you like. Do another run of Jeremy, and then you can do whatever you like. Oh, right, yeah. well, that brings us to the end. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately. All that's left for you guys at home to remember is me and Scott weren't just here for fun. I'd like to hope he did have fun, but he, we weren't just here for fun. Well, obviously, we have the charity. Uh, acting for others. Uh, all we ask is anything at all you can, pop it in the viral below. Um, and uh, the, the, Sorry, the link in the bio below, sorry, is what I meant to say there. Um, anything at all will be gratefully received and join us next time yeah down there Scott yeah <laughs> uh, anything, uh, join us next time when we will have Jenna Boyd who plays Beulah in Come From Away um, Scott's excited so Scott will be watching okay. <laughs> uh, so join us then but all as I say Scott thank you very much for joining us thank you, it's been an, genuinely it's been one of the best chats I've had it's genuinely been wonderful uh, thank you very much and guys take care. Bye. Bye. It's not only school that's rough. Being lonely.